Whoa! Wow! Look at this place. Beautiful, isn't it? You know, many different tribes of American Indians lived right here on these plains for thousands of years before any settlers came from across the seas. That's why Indians are often called Native Americans. They were the first people to live on the land we now call the United States. In fact, many Indians don't even call themselves Indians. Most tribes refer to themselves as the people. The Wabanaki, they're the people of the East, or children of the Dawn Country. The Hopi of the Southwest, they're the people of peace. And the Ojibwa, well, they call themselves Anishinaabe, or the first people. You know, the people lived here long before they had horses. Just imagine what it was like to travel across these plains hundreds of miles each year with only dogs and your own muscle power to help you carry everything you owned. A child of the Sioux tribe would call you Shukawakan, or sacred dog. And your horsepower meant that the people could hunt and travel faster and easier than they could with their dogs. And that often meant the difference between hunger and plenty. This book, Gift of the Sacred Dog, tells an old legend of the people that once lived on these plains and how the great spirit gave them the gift of horses, all because of the love and courage of one boy. gift of the sacred dog. Story and illustrations by Paul Goebel. The people were hungry. They had walked many days looking for the buffalo herds. Each day they hoped to see the buffalo over the next ridge but they were not to be found in that part of the country. Even the buzzards and crows circled looking for something to eat, and the wolves called out with hunger at night. The people wandered on until they were too tired and hungry to go any farther, and the dogs could no longer be urged to drag their heavy loads. The wise men said they must dance to bring back their relatives, the buffalo. Every man who had dreamed of the buffalo joined in the dance. The buffalo would surely know the people needed them. Young men went out searching in all directions, but they did not see any buffalo herds. There was a boy in the camp who told his parents, I am sad to see everyone suffering. I am going up into the hills to ask the great spirit to help us. Do not worry about me. I shall return in the morning. He left the circle of teepees and walked toward the hills. He climbed higher and higher. The air was cool and smelled fresh with pine trees. He reached the top of the highest hill as the sun was setting. He raised his arms and spoke. Great spirit, my people need your help. We follow the buffalo herds because you gave them to us. But we cannot find them, and we can walk no farther. We are hungry. My little brothers and sisters are crying. Great Spirit, we need your help. As he stood there on the hilltop, great clouds closed across the sky. Wind and hail came with sudden force and behind them, thunderbirds swooped among the clouds. Lightning darted from their flashing eyes, and thunder rumbled when they flapped their enormous wings. He felt afraid and wondered if the great spirit had answered him. The 
clouds parted. Someone came riding toward the boy on the back of a beautiful animal. There was thunder in its nostrils and lightning in its legs. Its eyes shone like stars and hair on its neck and tail trailed like clouds. The boy had never seen any animal so magnificent. The rider spoke. I know your people are in need. They will receive this. He is called Sacred Dog because he can do many things your dogs can do, and also more. He will carry you far and will run faster than the buffalo. He comes from the sky. He is as the wind, gentle but sometimes frightening. Look after him always. The clouds closed. And the rider was not there. Suddenly, the sky was filled with sacred dogs of all colors, and the boy could never count their number. Their galloping was like the wind, and the drumming of their hoofbeats shook the hilltop on which he stood. They circled round and round, and he did not know if he was standing or falling. He did not remember going to sleep, but he awoke as the sun was rising. He knew it was something wonderful he had seen in the sky. He started down the hill back home again to ask the wise men what it meant. They would be able to tell him. The morning and everything around him was beautiful and good. When the boy had reached the level plain. He heard a sound like faraway thunder coming from the hill behind. Looking back, he saw sacred dogs pouring out of a cave and coming down a ravine toward him. They were of all colors, just as he had seen in the sky, galloping down the slopes, neighing and kicking up their back legs with excitement. The leading one stopped when they were a short distance away. The boy knew they were what he had been promised on the hilltop. He turned and continued walking toward the camp, and all the sacred dogs followed him. The people were excited when they saw the boy returning with so many strange and beautiful animals. He told them, "These are sacred dogs. They are a gift from the Great Spirit. They will help us to follow the buffalo." They will carry the hunters into the running herds. Now there will always be enough to eat. We must look after them well, and they will be happy to live with us. <laughs> yeah. Life was good after that. The people lived as relatives with the sacred dogs, together with a buffalo and all other living things. As the great spirit wished them to live. When the people passed the place where they had hunted the buffalo, they would gather up the bleached skulls in a circle and face them toward the sun. Let us thank the spirits of the buffalo who died, so that we could eat.